It's good to be in the presence of the Lord and to feel the sweetness of the moving of the Spirit which come within our soul and our heart. One thing we have to realize is that the Spirit is already with us. It is when we ask God to come and fan that flame which is within our heart, then we start rejoicing, jumping, yelling, screaming, praying, and everything else. Everybody reacts in a different way. But it's always good to be in the presence of the Lord. There is a scripture which has been with me for a few weeks now. They are found, actually there are two of them. One is Luke 24, 49, and the other one is the Act of the Apostle, chapter 1, verse 8. Here, Jesus is speaking to his disciples before he went to heaven, and he said, I want you to go to Jerusalem and tarry there. I want you to go to Jerusalem and tarry there until you will be endued with power from heaven. The power is the power of God. Jesus made it very clear. So it's not the power that was coming from somewhere who knows where, but it was the power that came straight from the throne and the presence of God. Jesus said, you go and you tarry. Why do you have to go in Jerusalem and wait there? Now, according to statistics, we say that there is about 500 people that went to the upper room waiting for the promise of the Father to come upon them. But when the day of Pentecost came, there was only 120. That means that 75% of the people had got tired and they left and they went home. It reminds me when we started our hour of prayer, there was about 35 people coming every Tuesday night. Now we are down to 20, 25. Somehow we get tired of coming to the same place and wait. We are tired of waiting because we are a generation that we want everything to happen and we want it to happen now. But with God, we must learn how to wait. Wait into His presence. Because it is not our time that God will answer, but it is the time of God. And therefore, we must wait for that particular time. They waited for, they waited for a while there. Uh, first of all, they had to be in Jerusalem. Why in Jerusalem? They could have been anywhere else. They could have been in uh, Samaria or in Judea or any other place. But Jesus said, no, you go to Jerusalem because Jerusalem is the place where God had established his house, his temple. And he said that his presence was going, was going to be in that temple until the end of time. Therefore, we must come into the presence of God, into the place that God has chosen. And in these modern days, God has chosen the church whereby He dwells in the midst of His people. And this is the place where He will bless, He will enhance, He will give the power, He will strengthen them, He will encourage them, He will fire them, and that He will send us out to the nation in in order that we can conquer the world for the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what God has done. The church is important. Jesus said it very clear. Wherever two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the mix. My friends, sometimes we just say, oh well, it's me and my wife, I'm home, and that's it. It's already two. Jesus is present. It's three of there. That's not enough. We have to be in the house of God in the center of Jerusalem, in the temple, where there is the presence and the promise of the presence of the Spirit of God. Therefore, if we want to see anything, if we want to see the power of God manifested, it has to start here, in this place, in this chair where you are sitting, in this very place. This is what is going to start. 
and then it will spread around in Judea and in Samaria and all of the other most part of the earth. God has entrusted us in a marvelous, glorious way. When we got saved, we got saved, we became part of the family. God has entrusted us as members of his family. God has given me, in a modern language, God has given me and you a credit card. How many of you have a credit card? Now, that credit card is only a piece of paper, isn't it? Ah, uh, not paper, it's a bit of a plastic, isn't it? But that credit card gets money. It gets you anywhere you want to go. He buys you anything you want to buy. He gives you satisfied everything that you need to be satisfied. God has entrusted us with the power from heaven. He has given us the Holy Spirit, which is the credit card in which is given to you and to me in order that we can use it for the glory of God and for the power and the manifestation of the kingdom of God. I must be quiet. I can't really get excited too much. I mean, after all, I'm very close to 84 right now. And the weight of the uh, years, they come heavy on the shoulder. I couldn't figure out why the old people, when they walk, they always walk like that. Now I know why. <laughs> he has entrusted you. He has given you his credit card, the power of the Holy Spirit. And you have it, and you can use it. The point is that if you keep it in your pocket and you don't use it, well, then he's not going to do any good to you, is it? The Holy Spirit is the promise of the Father. The Father has promised the Holy Spirit. And the Jesus said very clear, that it was the promise of the Father. It's not something that you are going to have just for the sake of having something extra, but it is a promise that God has given to you. A promise that is, is the promise of the Father, which the disciples did not know anything about it. They knew all other things. They knew what, what happened. They had followed Jesus for three years. They saw the blind man receive the sight. They saw the blood of the dead man come to resurrection. They saw the, the, the palsy man healed. They saw the power of God manifested in many different ways. And for three years they have learned everything that Jesus had taught to them. Jesus, had, well, Jesus was one of the greatest teachers. And my friend, he was not only talking, but he was only manifesting whatever he had to his disciples so that they knew. But did they? At the end of the service, at the end of the three years of Bible college, Jesus said to his disciples, go to Jerusalem and wait there. Don't do a thing. Because when you, if, you do it because, if you do it because you have seen me doing it, that is not good enough. If you're doing it because you have just seen with the manifestation of your eyes, that's not good enough. You have to do it in the power and in the glory and the manifestation of the Spirit of God. It is God that works in us. The moment that any preacher, the moment that he does things just because he has learned how to do it, it's time to resign. That was my promise. They didn't know what the power of God or what to expect. Because never happened before. It's not something that they have heard before. They didn't. Therefore, they didn't know. And therefore, they, uh, they didn't know what to do. So the, the disciples, even of all of their training with the Lord Jesus Christ and everything, they could not, uh, they were not able to perform the kingdom and the glory of the things of God. Jesus, one day, he called them men of little faith. 
They could not perform. Even though they have seen what Jesus has done, they could have not been able to do it. You might have seen miracles, but unless you are filled with the power and the glory of the manifestation of the Holy Spirit and the power of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will not be able to perform anything. There is an anointing which has to come in your life. And my friend, the anointing, it is the fire of God, which is the fire of the Holy Spirit, but is also fueled and moved by the power and the wind that come, the, the, the wind that comes from the very throne of God. It is the fire by itself is not of any availability unless it's fed by the power of that by the power of the wind which come from the power of God in Jerusalem when the disciples were filled with the holy spirit there was the manifestation of fire and there was also manifestation of the wind because the fire by itself is useless my friend i remember one thing can i tell you something when I grew up, I used to go on a holiday down in my father's uh, uh, birthplace and uh, my, uh, stay with my auntie. And one day she made beautiful uh, pasta, homemade pasta, because in those places they, everything is homemade. And she made beautiful pasta and, uh, with eggs and flowers and everything else, and she worked very hard on it. Then she put a big pot on the... Uh, 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 on a fire and uh, waiting because they don't have gas or other things. They cook by wood and they put the wood uh, under the pot and there uh, was there and I it was getting late and I was young and I said to my auntie, he said, I'm hungry. And she said, uh, well, you have to wait a little bit. And I said, yes, but I'm hungry. I want it now. I can smell that pasta with that sauce, and I, I, I could, I could, in my mind, I could just smell it, and I just want it, and I want it now. When she saw my insistence, she gave me, uh, she gave me something in my hand. There is a, they used to have a, 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 a paddle, uh, something with um, a, a handle, with another handle in top over there, and all. Um, uh, chicken uh, feathers uh, attached to it. That was the fan. Never seen that? I have, but I'm, I'm older than you. <laughs> and that's a fan. So she gave me that pan and she said, uh, that fan. And she said, You are hungry? I said, Yes, I'm hungry. Well, here it is fan the fire. You see, once I start fanning that fire, the flames start blowing up and getting higher and higher and higher and getting hotter and hotter and hotter. And my friend, if we can have our fire which God has put in our heart and in our life, if we can have the tongues of fire which is the power and the manifestation of the Holy Spirit fanned by the power that come from the throne of God, who knows what's going to happen? Anything can happen, my friend, because when that fire gets filled up, then my my friend you can pray for your daughter and she can receive because the fan is there the fire is there but the fire alone is not enough unless we fan it with the power and the glory of the Spirit of God yeah. Fend the fire. <sighs> what can happen if we have 100 people which they all are filled and tongues of fire are upon them? And then the wind of God will start blowing on their life. What can happen in your life?
My friend, it's not enough to sit in church and be comforted by the moving of the Spirit of God and have some tongues of fire here and some tongues of fire there. It is good to have them, of course, and they will come and they will reinforce our belief in the Lord Jesus Christ and in the power of God. But if we want to see the power of God manifested, we must ask, for the fire, the wind of God to come and fan that fire. The fire is already there. The moment you receive the Holy Spirit, the tongues of fires are already in your heart and in your life. But unless that fire is, wind, is, is fanned by the power of God, it cannot do anything. The fire is used for quite different things, isn't it? I'm just taking normal things in order to spiritualize somehow so that we can understand. The fire is used... Have you ever touched the flame? Well, certainly not on purpose. But if by any chance you touch the flame, it burns, doesn't it? It hurts. I found that the power of the Holy Spirit, that fire that come into my life, sometimes it burns. It hurts. Because it's taking away certain things that I want to keep them for myself and I don't want anybody to touch them. But the Holy Spirit... To come and abide, he starts burning. The fire also warms up. Now, this is the situation where 95% of us are living day after day. We come to church, we have the fire of God, we get warmed up. Then we leave the church, we go home, and we cool off. Then we come back to church, and we come on the next Sunday, and the power of God falls upon us, and we get warmed up. Isn't that the Spirit says something here? Isn't there some knowledge that we should understand of something that is happening? If the fire keeps coming again and again and warm us up and warm us up, it means that He wants to warm us up more. He wants to make us hot. He wants us to do something. And He doesn't just want to warm us up when we are in church, but He warms us up also when we are outside of the church. The fire, it makes me comfortable because it warms me up. And in the cold days, it makes me comfortable. And I am afraid that the church today is so comfortable. Even Pentecostal churches, uh, which are proclaiming the fire and the power of the Holy Spirit in their mix, we have become so comfortable with the flame that warms us up uh, that we are careless uh, for whatever goes around us uh, and the world in which Christ wants to conquer for his kingdom. We are comfortable about uh, our own self. With the fire we use it is also to cook. Nobody cooks with ice. We always cook with fire. There is no other way of cooking but with fire. Now it can be electric or can be whatever, but it's still fire. And the fire we use it for cooking. And unfortunately, when our stomach is full, we'll feel satisfied. When our stomach is full, we feel satisfied. When we come to church and we learn and we hear teaching again and again and again, we get filled inside, we get satisfied inside, and we are careless to do anything at all because we are satisfied. I am happy, and when my stomach is full, I am happy. The only thing I want to do is go to sleep. And my friend, unfortunately, there is too many Christians today, including myself, 
We are so self-satisfied. Our spirit, spiritual stomach is full. And all that we want to do is to sleep. Awake, say the Spirit of God, because it's time to move for the kingdom, for the days are coming when we cannot work any longer. Yes. There is a thing that fire does. Have you ever seen a bushfire? It destroys everything in its path. That's the kind of fire that I like. The fire destroy. My friend, Jesus said, go heal the sick, cast out devils, do all of those kind of things that you have seen doing for me. And we are going out with the fire of God, with the power of God, and unfortunately we come back with nothing. We don't have that fire hot enough to destroy. They tell me that the greatest problem that the firemen have when there is a bushfire, it is the wind. Because the fire goes wherever the wind is blowing it. If a wind blows from one direction, the fire goes that direction. The wind changed the direction, the fire changed the direction. Isn't that great, my friend? Oh, hallelujah. We are so set in our direction. We are so set in what we want to do. We are so set in what we believe. We are so set in what we are experiencing day after day that we just don't want to move in any other direction. But, oh God, we are living in the last days and it is time for us to get in tune with the Spirit of God and with the wind of God and whatever that wind will take us uh, we will go for the glory of God the also the fire uh, the fire does something that we all know it does destroy but it also purify I have a brother actually I have two brothers they're both uh, uh, jewelers and um, and one day I went to, well, he was in Melbourne, of course. When I was there, I used to go and visit him quite many times at the shop. And I found him in the back of the shop. He, was, he had a flame in his hand, and he had a piece of little thing like this with something inside. And he had that flame on top of that. And he stayed there for quite a long time. I was talking to him, but he was giving me no attention. He was intended to make sure that the flame was going upon that thing. Finally, I was able to talk to him, and I said, what are you doing? He said, I am purifying the gold. My friend, the flame purifies the gold in which God has put in our life. Let him purify. Oh, God, purify my soul. Oh, God, purify my spirit. Oh, God, purify my mind. Oh, God, purify all that I have, my home and all of my possession. Purify them with a fire that comes from heaven. And wind of God blow upon that flame so that the purification may be right. And one of these days, when the trumpet shall sound, and I have to, the dead in Christ shall rise. If I am alive, I'm going to be translated in the twinkle of an eye. But I don't want just to be translated. I want to be purified. I want that my soul and my spirit will be so much purified by the fire and the wind of God that when the trumpet will sound, I will fly up in the sky and be with the Lord forever and forever and forever and forever. Forever. And when then forever is finished, it will start all over again. Forever and forever and forever. The fire is needed in the church, my friend. The fire is a queen equivalent of a spiritual revival. We pray for revival, but unless we have the fire, uh, the wind and the fire, the revival will never come.
The fire is good. It is excellent. But without the wind, it is powerless. Oh God. I, sometimes I, somebody asked me the description of the anointing. And I supposed to know the answer. But then one day the answer came to me. What is the anointing really? The anointing is the fire, the tongues of fire in our life. By themselves, they are good to nothing. They can do nothing. They are powerless. But when the wind of the Spirit of God come, when the wind of God come and fan that fire, that is the anointing, my friend. And when those two are working together, there is no power on earth that can stop or say uh, that can stop or can come against us. No weapon which will be fabricated against us shall prosper because the fan of God, it will come and it will be there. The revival come with the wind of God. The revival has come with the wind because the fire is already here. It is the wind that we need so that the move of God will come. God, I will say today, God, we need that move. Blow upon us, O oh Lord. Don't let it be tomorrow or the day after. But blow upon me now. Riyatabakura mandi shatakarandaya. Blow upon me now. Now. I don't want to wait for tomorrow. I want it now. I want to be able to go home, talk to my own family to start in Jerusalem, talk to my own family, and when I'm talking to them, they will see that I am a different person because I have an anointing. I have the power of the fire and the power of the wind that comes with me. And when I talk to them, they will notice that I am talking to them because I am not talking to them, but is the wind of God speaking to them is the anointing which is talking to their life oh God I want that anointing I will not want to move without that anointing I want the anointing from God to be with me forever until Jesus comes do you want the anointing do you want to be anointed my friend I have heard a lot of preachers that it is the oil for this and the oil for that. But in a simple word, Jesus said, go to Jerusalem and wait there. And you will receive the power from heaven. And that power came in fire and wind. Today, we need the fire and the wind. The fire is here already. You have it. I have it. It is within you. All we need is the wind. Oh God, give us, give us that wind. Let him blow upon you. Let us all stand, shall we? I want to leave this place anointed. Okay. I want to leave this place anointed. What about you? Yeah. What do you want to do? Yeah. How do you want to live your life? You're still going to go to heaven, but you miss the anointing. You're still going to go to heaven, but you miss the rewards in which they'll come to you by the power of God. The excitement of seeing the work of God manifested. Thank God for the musicians, for well, they are an inspiration, and I love every time they go up there. I want to leave this place anointed. Now, if you want that anointing, let us spend a few minutes here in the front. Do you want an anointing this morning? Not just a fire. You want an anointing. You want to be able to go home and do something. Well, then let's come up here. And let us ask God for an anointing for the power of God. Okay, Pastor Neil will take over.
<laughs> I'm not going anywhere. Holy Ghost, move. Ghost, Holy Ghost. Spirit of God. Holy Ghost. <laughs> Holy Ghost. Just while you're coming. Just while you're coming. Just quit very, very quickly. Can I tell you how to get the, get the anointing? Stir up the gift in you that will cause the fire to burn in you. Amen? Stir up the gift that will cause the fire to burn. Then the fire will draw the wind. They say when they dropped the bomb on Hiroshima, that which they dropped caused, uh, put a demand on oxygen, and it was like a hurricane. And I believe that we can do that. Amen? Just stir the gift up within you, and we're going to believe God.